So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this person uh, because my husband and I read a few of his passages and I was surprised to see some of the things that totally made sense to me and I know that there are lots of criticisms out there and there is kind of a division and it kind of connects to this whole postmodernists versus Marxists or neo-Marxists kind of a shenanigans but I found certain aspects of his theories to be quite helpful and quite well upon a first glance quite consistent with the overall Marxism um, as a science approach. First of all, the thing about anti-humanism, this is something that I find interesting and want to explore more of. The way I personally understood humanism before, I think may be misinformed and I may have refer referred to my own personal uh, understanding of humanism instead of looking at the actual definition and whatnot. And I still am not quite yet sure about what uh, humanism is. So to me, it used to always mean that any kind of pro-human <laughs> practices are humanists and that just shows how naive I am I guess but but the persons whose name I will probably never be able to pronounce idea of Marx being an anti-humanist uh, is interesting to me and with the whole epistemological break in the 1845 I think it kind of seems consistent um, so like most people do kind of uh, have this divide of like early Marx and like mature Marx and whatnot and I think that is a helpful um, division because Marx is considered, as far as I remember, to be a part of the modernist movement of thought, which still um, greatly, in its formative uh, first years, was still greatly affected by uh, German idealism. And there are plenty of people who can help me out with this, I'm sure. So you can correct me if I misrepresent any data. But after those formative years, Marx was kind of really said to make Marxism a science or make his approach scientific so he wanted to according to him uh, to get rid of the ideological aspect of centering the human and getting rid of the construct of human nature and again it's more of this person speaking rather than Marx so and this is through my processing so take it with one two three grains of salt uh, but then that makes sense to me that uh, Marx wanted to go as far away from the idealist school of thought, which looked at the transcendental existence of human creatures apart from their conditions and environments and their economic uh, circumstances and the way they produced and distributed um, things. And I think that's a very helpful lens to be looking at the way that the environment shapes the person and that is something that I've been kind of sharing and promoting for I suppose the entirety of my channel the fact that we can never claim full autonomy and we can never claim self-determination because it is impossible basically like we are determined by so many factors even before we are born and as we are developing in our early formative years, there's so many factors, again, outside of our control. And then later on in life, we're going to be influenced by, by, by another set of circumstances, many of which will be outside of our control. So I'm not a full-on determinist myself yet, but I see a lot of meaning and logic in the very determinist view that Marx and as far as I can tell, we're promoting. And the death of the subject concept is another thing that I really want to explore more of because it is the, uh, to, well, I can see the Lacanian uh, fragmented ego right away and of course the death of the author, uh, but the death of the subject in this case is not, as far as I can see, is not the, we don't care about humans and we don't care about individuals anymore is that we as subjects realize ourselves that there is no necessity for us to be separate entities and like there is no implicit meaning in us having this fully formed ego and that also reminds me of zen buddhism and some of the uh, metaphors that are suggested kind of remind me of this as well so the metaphor of stripping away the masks and underneath there is emptiness. So I've always been fascinated by this metaphor that I think is a Zen Buddhist metaphor, but don't quote me on this because I'm never sure. Uh, so the, so I think that we can derive uh, much helpful information from his ways, and I think that he, you can kind of see the 
postmodernist school being created in him kind of looking at the structure of the language, etc. And the structuralism simple take of mine is that we already use the kind of uh, relevancy of the subject towards another subject in our speech in most languages. For example, we may refer to people in their relation to us or in their relation to other people or in their relation to their environment. For example, you say, this is my husband, this is my mother, and I am such and such profession. Even though it is not a definitive be end all be all definition of you, we still identify ourselves and others in accordance to their relationship to the outside world. So I can kind of see how the structuralist school was emerging, and I can kind of envision how the next few steps towards postmodernism may have uh, taken place. And I'm very curious to learn more about this, and I think I'm going to continue reading these authors, even though they're not like always recommended by the true Marxist Leninists and whatnot, but they cannot stop me, so I'm going to read it anyway. But meanwhile, you can let me know what you think, and let's keep the conversation going.